Hello and welcome to the Sunday Incident of my podcast. My name is Winter and with me are Russ. Hello. And Claire. Hello. And we're going to take a look at some new cinema releases and also some uh, DVD release and uh, BBC's Sound of Cinema season. And then we'll finish up a little bit of chat about what's coming up with City Guernsey, which is all quite exciting. But first of all, I suppose the big film of the last few weeks is not Diana, but, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Elysium. Uh, made by, I don't know, Neil Blomkamp. Neil Blomkamp, yeah, and starring Matt Damon. Matt Damon, our oh, names are escaped me this morning. <laughs> it tells the story of a man who is forced to try and escape off world to the uh, Elysium compound, which is where the rich now live, uh, from his native LA, which looks suspiciously like present day Johannesburg. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite <laughs> funny, funny that. Anyway, uh, Elysium is a. Uh, to me, the setup is, is it, like I say, essentially, it's a man who cannot escape his economic background, who really needs some health care. There are some very obvious political parallels, but first of all, I think as a as an action movie, as like a chunk of sort of simple blastum sci-fi, what did we think of Elysium? I'll, I'll go first. Um, I really liked it. I, I love sci-fi anyway. It's um, it's one of my favourite genres. But this also had a lot of social. Like any good sci-fi film will have, it's a lot of social impact, and this will happen, what effect does it have on everybody? And uh, the story, it just took you through, um, from someone, from a young kid who had this dream of making his life better for himself and those around him, and to be able to go to somewhere like Elysium to have everything that you ever need to live a good life. Um, but it, it's, it was basically the, a massive message, um, the rich get good health care, the poor don't. And this kind of theme just stuck, um, just st- stuck with you all, all, all throughout the plot, um, and everything was based around. I need to get some healthcare. I need to get some healthcare. And normally, with that kind of strong messaging in a film, I tend to think, Ooh, it's, you know, you might as well have just done some documentary about health healthcare. But this actually was was a really interesting look, and and I think it it, it told a story that does affect so many people. So. From my point of view, it, it, was a, it was a great watch, but also a very, very good point that needed to be said. Yeah, I mean, it may, in many ways, I agree. I mean, I think you say it right. It, it's not, it's not the most subtle of films, is it? But I mean, sci-fi often isn't the most subtle because you can afford no, to kind of do it. You like because you're putting putting it in a, in a different kind of setting in that way. Um, so I think you know the the, the satire it's trying to talk about and, and you know the parallels it's drawing, especially with with America and you know, immigration and all that and healthcare and all, and all that kind of stuff is is there kind of for, for everyone to see. Um, as with District Nine, it, it, it looks great. I mean, what what Neil Bonkamp is obviously very good at is, is designing <coughs> not 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 just kind of you know worlds environments, but also it's, it's the technology and especially the, he, see, he seems to be very good and very interested in kind of weaponry. I know we were talking earlier on in the week winter about how. He does. He's very good at creating inventive ways of killing people. In terms of, mm. well, and there's a lot of there's a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whether it's kind of bodies exploding or you know faces being regrown or anything like that. And so that's all great. It's nice to see kind of new and inventive ways apart from just you know people getting shot by guns, which you know is it's obviously kind of one, one thing we all see quite a lot. I, I had kind of I had I had two small issues with it, and, and they are they are small. So I, I did really enjoy it. I, it, was, it was a good kind of hundred minutes you know, kind of to watch. One was, I thought it was very similar to District 9. You know, yes. it, 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 was, yeah. it, was, it, it was, it had the same look in terms of being filmed in Johannesburg and all that kind of stuff. It had, it had kind of the ro- the robotic kind of side to it that, that, that was present there as well. It had kind of, you know, the, the, the dirty and the clean and, and, all, and all that kind of stuff. So, so but, but one of the hardest things to be is, is, is truly original. And I think District 9 was one of those films that came across as being a really original, interesting story. And this is just, you know, a, a, a different different kind of sci-fi film but I think it just you know for me I was sat there thinking I was I really would love to watch this again which is because it's really, really yeah, I think yeah. I think it is a more interesting film it's a more complex film and um, I thought Shelter Copley was was equally good in both yeah. to, you know totally different yeah, and oh, he's bad yeah, really yeah, bad in this really, film really mean and hit that yeah. one of the best South African strong deep kind mm. of accents you've had in a long time in cinema which, which was great the other one was yeah. I mean, ha- having seen all the Bourne films, where we're all used to kind of shaky cam action, but I did think yeah. at times this took it to a whole new level where there were definitely moments when I was like, I don't even know what I'm watching. It, it just, it, sometimes it just became a bit of a mess. I think mean, there, there's a fine line between that raw handheld footage and this was just a little bit kind of, a, a bit too chaotic at times for me. I, I, at times I was questioning whether I've really thought Matt Damon was a, 
was a working class tattooed kind of <laughs> gangbanger. But I think he pulled it off quite well. You know, it, 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 I, I, one, thing you, one thing you can never say about Matt Damon is he, is he very rarely plays it safe. You know, he, mm. he's, he's normally yeah. doing quite interesting and, and, and different roles. So, so that was quite nice. So I enjoyed it. It was good. Um, it was certainly better than Oblivion, which, which, and, and which came out earlier in the year with Tom Cruise. Uh, and I mean, I hadn't seen After Earth, which was Shyamalan's most recent film, but yeah, I, gather that I, wasn't, I, don't I gather that wasn't up to much either. So in terms of recent sci-fi, it's, it's, it's got to be up there. I, I'm, I'm sat here looking at a Blu-ray copy of Looper that's over on Winter's End Fireplace that I did happen to re-watch about, uh, about two weeks ago. And, I mean, and that is, I mean, I know that it was... And that's the world, isn't it? it, it yeah, it, and I think it, it was both of yours best film of, of, of last year, I think. Yeah. And, oh, and it, it is fantastic. So, I mean, I think that's the kind of the pinnacle of, of recent sci-fi that we've seen. But Elysium fits fits into the genre nicely. It's funny you should mention Oblivion, because as Claire was talking, I was thinking of Oblivion. And uh, like Oblivion, it's, it's a film you kind of think, am I watching this... Am I watching a smart film that's been dumbed down, oh. or a dumb film with some interesting ideas? Yeah, in it? Yeah, it kind of yeah. straddles that, it, yes. but it does it in quite an, une- an uneasy way. I mean, it's a, it's definitely sort of recommended to see, and I think it's it's finished at the Manor Lot now. So yeah. if you didn't see, I think you missed a treat on the big screen because it looks great. Mm. Um, but it does have this, uh, and it, I think it rolls into what you were saying about District Nine as well. It, it, it is essentially District Nine replayed in many ways, just on a slightly bigger budget. And when District 9 came out, um, I mean, I sort of went online and you kind of look up Neil Blomkamp and on YouTube, you can see all of his short films. Yeah. And so I've seen The Policeman and Elysium before, the Transvaal Robocop film. Yeah. And it's just like he's had, he kind of had all these ideas. Right. And you can imagine there was probably, like, a, <coughs> I get this idea, there was kind of like a four-hour film he wanted to make, but couldn't. So it's kind of all these disparate kind of ideas about corporations and rich and poor and kind of the um, kind of the, the struggle to be something yeah. else and to sort of out, out, out kind of outlive where you're stuck in society uh, plus all the technological kind of the computer game style guns and weaponry because I mean there is a moment in this film where someone literally gets disintegrated <laughs> by a machine gun. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it yeah. looks like something out of Doom. Or yeah. Yeah, of, yeah. Sorry, is that the oldest computer game reference? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doom. Yeah. 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 It looks a bit better than Doom. Yeah. It's a bit, this yeah. room is a bit better than Doom. Yeah, but it kind of, and you do kind of think, well, okay, so it feels like he got all that stuff out of his system. Like, all his showreel stuff is now done on the big screen. And I'm really interested to see where yeah, he's going to go again. But I've got to say, the moment this comes out on Blu-ray, I'm going to rent it and watch it again because it's it's full of ideas, and I, mean, I think Jodie Foster's a bit much in it. There's a bit too much kind of almost yeah. Cruella de Vil style, yeah, moustache twirling, <laughs> yeah, cackling in the background, bad yeah, person going on. There. But I love the I love the idea of the um, uh, kind of the immigration thing, and then trying to. Crash people and yeah. get yeah, up there. Yeah, it's, it's a great idea. I, I like that kind of whole like gang that was doing yeah. this, and the heist, the data heist, is brilliant. I thought it was such a, I mean, it's a really smart idea. They kind of, yeah. I'm not going to spoil it, but they have to steal data from someone's head a bit, like in was it Johnny Mnemonic or yeah. whatever. Yeah, and so they they rack up in these kind of what look like death race yeah. style vehicles yeah. with all this weaponry, and you put and it. Oh, I thought it was a brilliant idea for a brilliant way of doing it, and I still like the look he's got of this kind of like it's everything's simultaneously better and, and a bit shittier. Yeah, because all the technology I mean, the technology they're using is fantastic, but it's all like these kind of it's screwed into his bones. Like bit displays and yeah, kind of yeah. really kind of kind of gnarly well, it, 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 like you say it's, it, it, it's, it, it, it's the tech, junk, yeah exactly it? it's, it's the technology that, that the guys at the top throw out that they then mm. repurpose it and, uh, and do things with isn't it like I say that's a nice kind of way I mean it's funny thing about what you were talking about you know in terms of YouTube and that I suppose that's why 10 years ago Neil Blomkamp would have come out of nowhere and he would have been amazing mm. And wow, this guy's just his ideas are phenomenal. Where did he get them from? But nowadays, you can go back and see where they come from. And like you said, yeah, you, yeah. and therefore, you, he's obviously had these ideas for years and short films and bits on YouTube and all that stuff. And now he's kind of pulling them out. And you can almost get disillusioned by it. But yeah, that's mm-hmm. just the way the world works, isn't it? You know, you kind of you see, see people go from other adverts or you know, see music videos, and because you've seen it all, it, it's tough to kind of uh, keep that distance and, and understand that it's still it's still all good stuff it's, it's not that they're doing it pulling out the same old rubbish again it's just 
you'd never see that 10 years ago. That was the video they'd no. show to the production company and go, look what I can do, you know. Whereas now, when you get, of course, when you get DVDs and Blu-rays, you kind of, you sometimes get little short films they've made and you can see they've just remade yeah. the yeah. same film yeah. sort of again and again for 10 years <laughs> until they got famous. And yeah, then, and they can make a um, budget. Okay, so that was Elysium. I think I'd give it a, I'd give it a solid thumbs up, despite... Oh. Quite, not quite knowing well, like what to I, think of it. Yeah, it's, it's not a film. It's in no way perfect, you know. It's not no. a perfect film, but it's better than most. I think it's, it's a really good attempt. You know, it's a really good sci-fi film. Mm. And like you said, when it comes out, I'd watch it again quite happily. And I think, I think it's one of those that I might sit back and enjoy a bit more when you're just in your own home and just kind of relax. I think the parts are better than the whole. Yeah, I think maybe yeah, the yeah. best way to. Yeah, but the parts are well worth. Yeah. Well worth watching. So um, when we were, so that was Elysium, and when we went. When I went to watch Elysium, uh, I also went to watch Alan Partridge on the same night, which was nice of a and Russ turned up. <laughs> um, so yeah, okay, we had a little cinema night as well. Mm. I was really glad I didn't wear my red hoodie though, because that would have just looked really weird. Because I definitely have one of been matching. Like um, <laughs> so we went to see Alan Partridge, uh, Alpha Papa, <laughs> the film is called. Uh, essentially, Alan Partridge works at North Norfolk Digital. The radio station has been taken over and turned into a... Something a bit more, well, the bad is a bit more it. generic, but yeah. it's been turned into Shape FM, and one of the staff isn't happy, and an armed siege ensues. <laughs> of course. What did you make of Alpha Papa? I mean, I, I just want to say, whatever I say about this film, I did laugh most of the way through. And when I laughed, yeah. I laughed a lot. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, what do you think, Russ? I mean, I'm just saying, it, I mean, it was basically like watching an Alan, it's an Alan Partridge episode for 90 minutes. You know? yeah, that, that, yeah. And, and that's a good thing. You know? I, don't, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, I think if they tried and made it quite crazy, or, and, and there's a few things that jar in there. But, you know, like you said, it is, it is consistently funny for 90 minutes. I mean, it, it, as with all these kind of things, there's always going to be a, a part, normally around hour and a bit through, where it does sag a bit because they do have yeah. to. They do have to tell a story at some point, otherwise, you know, there'd be there'd be no point. So there was a bit where you think, oh, yeah, and then it picks up kind of kind of again, and then they go on holiday, and then they go on holiday. <laughs> exactly. That's what happens in all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what you have to do. Um, I mean, Steve Coogan is great at it. You know, he's, he's Alan Partridge, yeah. yeah. And and when when he's not kind of you know throwing out the one liners and and, and then miming along to songs, which is actually one of the most pleasurable things in the film, it happens a few times where he's either in his car or doing something, and he's either singing or miming along to normally eighties rock classics. Mm. And it's just it's quite it's it's not necessarily laugh out loud funny, but it's a pleasant joyful thing to kind of just sit back and experience. But kind of his facial tics, you know, I mean, you don't have to talk about Steve Coogan. Everyone kind of knows knows what he does, and, and that's why it's good. Um, I mean, I thought one of the best things about it was his, you know, was his DJ mate, who was played by Phil Cornwell, who's uh, DJ Dave Clifton. Oh, who, yeah, who yeah, kind yeah, of, He's kind of the darkest thing, in it? He's yeah. kind of this, this DJ who's obviously been doing it for too long. He's got a lot of issues. And every now and again, you get kind of a cut of him just kind of spouting bile about his own, oh, I killed myself, or whatever, you know, suicide attempts and all that kind of stuff. And, that, and, that, and that's what good and funny. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, look, it, it's one of those real difficult things to transfer, I mean, what has been one of the most successful British comedy mm. creations of the last, what, 20 years? On, yeah, yeah, onto yeah. film. You know, it, it would almost be like Ricky Gervais saying he's going to do <laughs> a, a film of The Office, you know, in a way. And so it, it comes with all those pitfalls and it comes with all those, you know, potential problems that, that, that you might have in, 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 in converting it to film. And, and so yeah, I, it certainly has. It's not without fault, but I found it pretty pretty hilarious. Mm. And um, it's it's one it's one of those that you you're not quite sure whether it would stand up to a second viewing because no, has yeah. it has it kind of expanded all of its mirth on that first viewing? You know, it, it, it's not like I oh, oh, no, I've said before an Anchorman, you know, where I can watch Anchorman yeah. fifty times a year and yeah. still laugh out loud. Funny, I don't know if I would at this. But like, like you said, we sat there for 90 minutes so in, in quite, a, quite a busy cinema and, yeah, yeah. and everyone seems to have a good time with it. But I'm sensing that you've since uh, found some, some no, niggles. No, just, I mean, I think if it hadn't been something you'd got on telly mm-hmm. and it was an hour long, it would have probably been one of the best things you'd seen yeah. in the year. Yeah. But stretched out to 90 minutes, I felt there were those bits, there were those sort Definitely. of in between. I, I think the reason it does work, though, is because Partridge is such a strong... Character. I mean, I'm, you know, Steve Coogan, he's variously good and not good depending on how much he's Steve Coogan mm. in the film. And how much you like that, you know. Well, yeah, you I mean, it. but with Partridge, you really get the sense that the character was there before the film started and is there 
you get the sense the character exists outside of the scenes in the film. So he's such a solid and rounded character. And I think that's because, obviously, I mean, he's been kicking around now for what? Yeah. 10, 15, yeah. maybe 20 years, uh, I don't know. And it has the luxury of diving straight in. Yes. You know, there, yeah. there is no introduction in this film. I like, uh, I like just... Tim Key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psychic time. And it, it worked really well when they did the uh, Fosters. Uh, they did the yeah, yeah. online thing with Fosters, yeah. like the 10-minute thing just in the studio, just them two, and, you know, a, a guest would come in and whatnot. Um, here, yeah, a bit too long, but I, I was really expecting to not find this funny and to be very disappointed. And I think, as I said, I, I laughed all the way through. And he is, it's a very funny character. And there's some great observations in, in this about kind of what radio is and <laughs> kind of the naffness of and how sort of digital radio, you know, more radio doesn't always equal better radio. And just that type of, that age of man, I think, <laughs> is, just fascinates me entirely. And I dread, I dread getting there. But no, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a good film, as I would say. Cheers, <laughs> man. That's all I can really say about it. I, I, I could have done with some Toad Road binge, so. That would yeah, be yeah, that would have been good. Yeah, just so we're gonna gonna move on now. Okay, you've watched the Incredible Bird. What did you say? Yeah, this was. Um, I just thought I, I need to watch something that's on DVD because I, I went home for a bit and I thought, oh, let's find something. So I thought, oh, Steve Carell, like Steve Carell. So I um, downloaded the Incredible Bird one stone, and it's also starring Steve Buscemi and uh, Jim Carrey. And it's basically the, the rough summary is, is uh, when a street magician stunt begins to make their show look stale, superstar magicians Bert Wonstone and Anton Marvelton look um, to salvage their act because they're very traditional um, magicians. So the whole premise is, <coughs> excuse me, I'm saying the whole, the whole premise is, is these two guys have been doing magic since they were probably around about 11 and are very successful, uh, are doing really, really well in Vegas, but their show has been going on now for 20 years. And it's the same show. And then all of a sudden, Jim Carrey comes along doing this crazy street magic, similar to Dynamo <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> David Blaine. Blaine. And, and so now it's kind of rocking <laughs> the traditional um, magic world. And this film took so long to get into it. It literally took an hour before you can actually sit and feel quite comfortable with the film. Because oh, it was God. just so slow. But once it kind of got there, I was very unexpectedly laughing out loud, like, hilariously at some moments. And it's just the comedy timing. That these, these people have been doing comedy for so long now mm. that you give them this script and they're just going to add lyrics. They're just going to go off and run. Because it's Steve Buscemi as well, right? Yeah. yeah. And he, uh, he's looked like he's lost a ton of weight. Jim Carrey looks like he's lost a ton of weight. And so, so you've got these people who've just been dieting to do this kind of like trendy magic <laughs> stuff. And it just, it's, it's actually this whole new culture of uh, magic. Trendy magic. And it's just, it's bizarre, but um, if you can withstand the first hour of, of drollness and repetitiveness, <laughs> then it, the last uh, 40 minutes does provide some really good comedy. And uh, there's, I mean, Jim Carrey has just been in um, the Hip Girl. Uh, Kick Ass Kick 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 um, And now they're going to do Dumb and Dumber um, again <laughs> in the sequel. Dumb and Dumber three. Or... No, they did. Yeah. They did. They did a. They, they did a second one, I think. Oh, was it called Dumb and Dumber? Or was it? Oh, I, yeah, I didn't see the second one. They weren't in the second no. one, were they? No. I think it was a prequel. <laughs> um, but now they're, they're coming back. So Jim Carrey's obviously getting back on the comedy circuit, and, and any more possible to start getting <laughs> Dumb and Dumber. But yeah, I I kind of recommend this film for Sunday afternoon. It was funny. Yeah. So, but as I said, just get past the first hour because it is so. Repetitive. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's good. If you like to see Claude and uh, Jim Carrey. It would make a change from the 40-year-old virgin, which is on every day <laughs> on ITV2. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it would be nice to catch him in something else. Nutcastle's running, not not running, running yeah. pretty, yeah. Yeah. pretty, pretty they solid. They are the two yeah. go-to fillers. <laughs> <laughs> and they're both like 100 years long. And lo- yeah. yeah, they're very yeah, long. Like two and a half hours <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so just moving on. BBC have been doing a Sound of Cinema season. I've... I'm one of those people I tend to tape a lot of stuff and then watch it a month later when no one's on talking video, about on it. Video, on videotape? Claire, yeah, on videotape. <laughs> uh, Claire's watching it in the now. 
So Claire, what's, what's the sound of cinema season all about then? Well, basically, they, they, they do these special months where they go, right, let's focus on this. Um, I think BBC Radio 1 are doing kind of new music. And all of a sudden, BBC, um, uh, BBC Radio 6, um, BBC 4 on TV, um, are just showing um, these kind of documentaries and podcasts and types of radio shows about the origins of um, cinema when it comes to music, famous composers, where they started from and how they got to where, where we get the big James Bond films, how pop music's important cinema. It literally takes you through um, since the beginning of the Golden Age and right through to now and how we got to where we are now and how film music is still producing these wonderful classical musicians, mm. orchestras and compositions. Um, so if you are into um, cinema, I told you, uh, especially the music side of it, soundtracks, I really recommend it. It was quite a surprise because I didn't, I didn't realise it for long until someone said, oh, check mm. this out and then listen to BBC Six and then do something on a Sunday. Um, and it's actually done by film composers. It's not done by somebody who's like, oh, I'm really into it. It's actually done by the people who are there living it every day. So they get a wonderful opportunity to go and interview all these directors. That because they're involved in the business and they're doing documentaries themselves, they can go and meet all the people that they work with. Mm. So, yeah, wonderful insight. Um, and also, on the plus side, they're showing the films that they're talking about. So, the Ipcus Files is on for the week. We've got Mean Streets coming up. And there's also um, a couple of other films that are coming up as well. Which I remember, but Did you mention Citizen Kane? Citizen Kane, yes, yeah. that's at Citizen Kane's coming on. Mm. So, I mean, this, this is all really good stuff. Cinema, and it's been shown, it's meant to be, but it's, it's wonderful to actually hear the history of it, isn't it? Mm. So, yeah, maybe. Okay, and just, uh, just as we talk about documentaries, um, I noticed last week that Herbert's Guide Cinema has yes. a sequel coming out, Herbert's Guide to Ideology. So, I've got an order with Herbert's Guide to Cinema, I haven't seen it in ages. I've never seen it. I think I've got a copy of it somewhere on some rubbish DVD yeah. or something, because it was, <coughs> you know, uh, but essentially it's, um, <laughs> so Zizek, I yeah, can't I pronounce, know, his can't pronounce his name. Zizek is a, um, a philosopher, but the thing, he's pretty much the opposite of someone like Noam Chomsky. That Zizek is all about kind of just these very small snippets of kind of extreme philosophy and ideas about film and cinema and life. Uh, Perfect Guide to Cinema is fantastic because what you just to get is Zizek inserted into into scenes just coming up with <laughs> 200 ideas a minute about what various films are, are actually about. And um, often it's kind of counterintuitive to what you suppose they would, he, he'd say about them. Uh, I know on our, on our Facebook page in the past we posted, he did a very good five-minute sort of little chat about why he likes the future of, why the future of children of men is so interesting and so on. Um, so Herbert's Guide to Ideology comes out in... October, it's going to come out straight onto DVD at the same time, so I think we'll be um, previewing that at the time, but if you've got a chance, in the meantime check out Perfect Sky Cinema it's very funny, and if you want to see a man, a, a very old man tell people that flowers should be banned around children <laughs> because they're just so vulgar um, <laughs> it's, it's, re it's really interesting stuff and like side by side, you sit there thinking mm. oh, damn list of films that's watch, the problem I'm, I'm still, just still, still <laughs> trying to work through my list as a result of that, of that documentary which is a nightmare it's like Shit Troopers is up next wow. mm -hmm. <laughs> finally let's finish off with Cine Gendi uh, Russ yeah Cine Gendi news uh, what's coming up what's coming up uh, on Tuesday that's the 24th of September we have uh, Rust and Bone which is the first kind of showing from our new uh, autumn season running from now till, till Christmas to December. Been very favourably here. Very, yeah. very much so. I mean, I, I loved it. Sorry, Marion Cotillard. Um, uh, just a just a brilliant, brilliant film. Really worth it. So, I mean, if you if you didn't if you didn't manage to catch it on DVD or you know, any other kind of way, come along to the uh, Candy Candy Museum on Tuesday nights. The film starts at seven thirty. Um, I mean, one other thing we can we can talk about is um, on the I believe it's the what, when's Halloween? Thirtieth of October or the thirty first? Thirty first of October, which I believe is a Thursday. Um, we're showing a, a little a little film called The Thing by John Carpenter, um, the original one. Um, so, if you fancy a good bit of awesome 80s creature horror, yeah. then, then say same same place, same time. Come, come on down and, and catch that with hopefully a, a, a lot of like-minded individuals. The Halloween kind of screen normally gets a good audience in, so it, it, it would be good to kind of catch that one as well. 
Okie dokie, and we're coming up to October, so I think maybe October we should make it a horror month or something. We something. should do, we got a few, um, Evil Dead remake. We should that one. We've got to, we've got to go and watch the thing. It'd be great watching it. I was so excited when I saw the little poster yeah. on Hill Street. I did a little, <laughs> <laughs> a little squeak. Anyway, that's it for this episode of the Sunny and Cinema podcast. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, please remember to follow us on the Facebooks and the Twitters where we randomly <laughs> send out some stuff about film and other <coughs> geeky things. And I think next time around there was a TV show I think we should be reviewing next time around Agents of Marvel. Oh, that's all Agents right. of Shield. Yeah, Agents, Agents of, of Shield. That's right, Agents of Shield. Shield. Agents of Shield starts next week, so we'll probably be delving into that as well because that's kind of messy, maybe, isn't it? Anyway, thank you very much for listening.